It's said that a picture is worth a thousand words. Pictures are one of the most powerful tools to visualize our time and history, but sometimes also the future. The power of a picture is the story and the narrative that they tell. That's why the picture we create has the power to change what the future holds. When I first got the request of being a TEDx speaker, I got super pr excited, proud, and honored. Then the familiar feeling of doubt and uncertainty started to kick in. And I started to ask myself, why am I really here? What is the story that I can tell that would be worth listening to? And what is the picture that I'm trying to project? What kind of future am I building? My name is Linnea Kuned Falk, and I, am, and I am an entrepreneur. I'm here today because I've co-founded a technology company that does self-driving and electric transport systems. Our ambition is to create more sustainable, cost-competitive, and efficient transport solutions. From a young age, I have always been interested in building things and driving things forward. But as many women can relate to, I did not grow up exposed to a lot of female founders and entrepreneurs. What I learned as an adult is that, of course, there were brilliant female in inventors, entrepreneurs, and business leaders in our history. It was just that their stories were, were never told, or at least not told to me. The picture of entrepreneurs that I got was all about men and all the great things that men could achieve. This often made me feel like I did not have a voice and that no one was counting on me to be one of the people that could actually build our future. Sadly, I know I am not alone in this. Many women share my experience. But that does not mean that it has to be true for the future generation of entrepreneurs. Another thing that I was told growing up was that girls should not compete. They should settle for what is. That they could not compete in the business world and that men were more suitable to build companies than women. Not that long ago, one of my mentors said to me, you are one of the most competitive people that I have ever met, but you don't let other people see it. You just act and you work, and then people are surprised about what you have done. I guess growing up thinking that no one wanted to hear my story made me start working really hard without telling anyone. Not because I wanted to keep it a secret, it was just simply because I did not think that people would care. And I believe that there are many people that can relate to this. But on the upside, without an audience, I could work and fail without being judged. And I have failed many times. When we founded our company back in 2016, I was exposed to another very strong and solid narrative of how transport should be done. There was this saying from the industry that heavy duty electric transport will not work on an electric platform and that self-driving technology is way into the future. And I mean way, way into the future. And it might come as a surprise, but they also said that a young female cannot be the one of the founders of a company that wants to make a future that's electric and autonomous. Our history is full of entrepreneurs that has been challenging the status quo, aiming to build something better. The innovation of fossil-based transport is one of the single most important innovations of humankind because we built wealth and we built society on it. But on the downside, our dependency on fossil fuels has gotten us into one of mankind's biggest challenges. Transport is one of the major contributors to the global greenhouse CO2 emissions and is one of the fastest growing contributing sectors. And if you would have to go back if just a few years, it was an unchallenged narrative that we needed fossil fuel and that our society could not exist without it. Today, entrepreneurs all around the world are challenging that narrative. 
This is not the first time that we have challenged the world and changed it. It has, in fact, become the norm. The world started to change very quickly about 200 years ago. The second information revolution spread with the wide adaptation of public education, and so did the ideas and the implementation of how we should live our lives. Our way of living today is still very much based on ideas from that revolution. Books that educated how we should live our lives was the highest fashion. Great thinkers competed in thoughts of how we, should, how we could build a better society and how we should live our lives. And in many ways, we succeeded. The health and the wealth that we built is due to new ways of thinking. By challenging what was, we managed to create a society where 98% of the people in the Western world live at the same level of wealth as 2% did at the beginning of the 19th century. Not bad for making a change. But that does not mean that we are done. Just imagine what we can do in the next 200 years. What will be the challenges for the next generation of entrepreneurs? As today, we have access to more information and knowledge than ever before. But as information and knowledge are getting more widely spread, the more we start to simplify the stories that we tell. Simplification is a great tool to spread, to spread information. It gets around fast and it makes it easier for people to understand and learn. The danger, however, with simplification is that it will sometimes interfere with what is actually possible. Painting the world in black and white leaves all of the shades of gray out, which makes it hard to challenge. One simplified version of what is possible is how to make transport sustainable. When we founded our company, we were told that heavy duty electric trucks would never be possible to make because the batteries would be too heavy and it would not be possible to do a good business case out of that. And to be fair, fair, they were not completely wrong because you cannot simply replace a fossil fuel truck with an electric one. It is not as simple as that. But is it possible to do sustainable transport? It is, but it has to be rethought and we have to draw a new picture of how it can be done. The transport solutions of our future should not be constructed from the knowledge that we had in the 19th centuries. It should be constructed of the knowledge that we have today. And so what is an entrepreneur's role in shaping our future? I believe that it is the entrepreneur's role to show that something else is possible, to show that something can be better than today. Making a judgment based on old narratives of what is possible does not build great new companies or societies. And not everything that we know to be true today will be true tomorrow. And today we see entrepreneurs all around the world challenging the narratives from the 19th century and proving that with new ideas and innovations, we can reshape our future for the better. Like Oville Wright, one of the Wright brothers who invented the airplane said, if we all worked on the assumption that what is accepted as true is really true, there would be little hope of, of advance. For me, I see my role as an entrepreneur to challenge what is, to not accept convention and to show how things can be done differently. And this does not mean that entrepreneurs will always be right. There will be a lot of failure along the way, but it will be another version of how the future might look like. One of my personal inspirations is Coco Chanel. As an entrepreneur and founder of Chanel, she redefined fashion. She introduced clothing that, was made, that made it possible for women to move more freely. She challenged the industry with more simpler and practical clothes for women. But maybe the most important thing that she did was that she inspired generations of women to break with the old and create something new. She stated, 
My life did not please me, so I created my life. Coco Chanel's entrepreneurship and vision created a new fashion industry. Today, there are more women entrepreneurs in fashion than there are male ones. Without Chanel showing the way, maybe it would have looked different today. Another business where female entrepreneurship has come to be accepted is within hair and beauty. And who was the pioneer behind that? Have you ever heard about Sarah Breedlove? She was an entrepreneur and a political and social activist. She is recorded at the, as the first female self-made millionaire in America. She developed her company and marked the line of cosmetics and hair care products for women through her business. And she did all of this in the 19th century. There are still a lot of areas of business where we need to see more female founders and entrepreneurs challenge what is. And transport is just one of them. I do believe that the best day of mankind are still to come. And we as entrepreneurs and innovators should show the way and project an alternative picture of what will become. Being an entrepreneur is to set yourself up for failure and hope for success. One of the best advice that I have ever received was from one of my role models that said to me, sometimes you don't have to perform, sometimes you just need to show up. And I believe being an entrepreneur is many times just about that. Showing up, even though it's uncomfortable and scary. Challenge the status quo. Be ready to fail, but hope for success. And yes, it is time for a pause. It is time for all of us to take some time and to reflect on the society that we would like to see. And we need to start painting the picture of the future that we would like to see. So why am I here today? I'm here today because I am an entrepreneur, I dare to fail, and I never give up on a better tomorrow. Thank you.